click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. So in this video, we are going to learn about how we are going to get Newton's rings and the conditions for maxima and minima. In order to understand the formation of Newton's rings, first of all, let us try to know what are Newton's rings and how are they formed first of all. So Newton's rings as the name itself suggests is nothing but a set of concentric rings of diminishing Newton's rings is nothing but a set of concentric rings whose radii actually will go on decreasing or rather the distance between these rings is not going to stay constant. You can actually compare this pattern with that obtained by a wedge shaped film. When you have studied wedge shaped film, you must have understood that the bandwidth of the wedge shaped film pattern is uniform. But in this case, we do not have a uniform bandwidth. This is one of the most important criteria of the Newton's rings. Second thing is, how is it that they are formed? For understanding this, you have to consider the figure. They are formed when we are having a plain glass surface and on this plain glass surface, we are having a plano convex lens. Actually, the radius of curvature over here is very small. We have exaggerated it. But in reality, if at all you wish to observe Newton's rings, you need to have a very large radius of curvature of the plano convex lens. And whenever such an assembly is subjected to monochromatic light, then what you perceive over here is nothing but the Newton's rings. So they are formed due to the interference of light waves in between this air gap out over here. In order to understand this further, let us look at the ray diagram. So we have a monochromatic source over here. Let me mark this particular source as S. Rays that are emitted from this monochromatic source are incident on this plate, which is a glass plate. It is G1. And when the rays are actually incident over here, of course, you are going to have some transmission. At the same time, you are also going to have reflection. We have not shown the transmission part. We are only showing the reflection part. So consider this ray, for example this particular ray. Now this ray will actually strike the bottom of the plano convex lens at the point B and at the point B it will so happen that since there is a change in the medium there will be refraction and the ray will get refracted away from the normal. That refracted ray is going to impinge or going to get incident at the point G on the bottom glass plate. At that particular glass plate, once again, there will be a transmission. I'm not going to show that ray for you. And plus, there is also going to be a reflection. This reflected ray is once again going to impinge or it is going to be incident on the lower plano convex surface at the point D. When it reaches the point D, once again it will undergo refraction and this is the ray that will actually get refracted up. So we have also have to show something like this over here. So there is going to be an interference between these two rays. Now when you are considering the interference between these two rays, we are always considering the optical path difference. And this optical path difference, I'm going to write down it as delta. Immediately you will see that when we are considering the optical path difference, this is going to be equal to mu, which is going to be the refractive index of the medium that is present over here. And 
इंटू बी क्यू बी क्यू प्लस क्यू डी प्लस क्यू डी इन ऑर्डर टू मेक मैटर सिंपल वी आर गोइंग टू अप्रॉक्सीमेट दिस टू म्यू इंटू ट्वाइस ऑफ बी क्यू वेर इन आई एम मेकिंग अ वेरी सिंपल असेंशन दैट दिस डिस्टेंस एंड दिस डिस्टेंस इज ऑलमोस्ट द सेम With that particular approximation, we are having mu into two into t, that is your delta, and hence your delta, which is going to be the phase difference, is going to be equal to as simple as two mu t. Let me mark this particular equation as one. So we have got an expression for the path difference, the optical path difference between these two waves. the next thing is i want maximas and minimas in order to do that i will now equate this particular part difference to 2 mu t is equal to so whenever i want a maxima this is going to be equal to n into lambda and whenever i want a minima this is going to be equal to 2n plus or minus lambda by 2 so over here you are going to have a maxima and over here you are going to have a minima but mind you we have missed out on one very important step and there is nothing but the application of the stokes theorem what does the stokes theorem say that whenever light is actually getting reflected from a more denser medium then it is going to undergo a phase change of plus or minus lambda by 2 and in this case we are having a reflection at the point q due to this we will have an additional phase difference over here which is going to be equal to plus or minus lambda by 2 hence now this is going to be your equation for your maxima so you're going to have lambda by 2 plus or minus 2 mu t is equal to n lambda so in this case what we are going to have is or to write this expression we write this particular expression in a more formal way 2 mu t plus or minus lambda by 2 is equal to n lambda and this is what i am going to calculate as my equation 2 and from this i can now obtain the condition for the thickness so the thickness is going to be equal to this is going to be equal to 2 mu t is equal to n lambda once again this is going to be equal to plus or minus lambda by 2 or you can even take that as minus or plus lambda by 2 whichever way you want to take it and this is going to be equal to 2n plus or minus 1 into lambda by 2 but mind you you are going to have your thickness t is going to be equal to 2n plus or minus lambda by 2 the factor 2 mu is going to come over here into 2 into mu so this is your final condition for i have marked that as 2 i have marked this as 2 now over here i have marked this as 2 so this is the final expression which i get for the thickness at which there will be maxima that is for that particular thickness at which there will be constructive interference or a bright newton ring will actually appear now let us try to see something regarding the thickness this is the thickness that i was speaking at this particular point over here symmetrically opposite to this there is going to be the same point which is going to have the same thickness because this is actually a circle this means for each thickness there is going to be a set of points lying on a circular loci 
and that's the reason why we are having circular fringes. This is the condition for the maxima. Now let us try to find out the condition for the minima. We now consider the condition for the minimas that is for the dark ring that is for a destructive interference. We know that the phase difference or the optical part difference delta is going to be equal to 2 mu t is equal to 2 n plus or minus 1 lambda by 2 and this is going to be for the equation 3 and this is going to be for the minima or for the destructive interference. Mind you, once again we are going to make or rather we are making the same mistake. We have not added the term plus or minus lambda by 2. That is the reason why I have left some space over here. So, 2 mu t plus or minus lambda by 2 is equal to 2 n plus or minus 1 lambda by 2. This is now the perfect condition for the minima. Let us simplify this further and let us make this as 2 mu t plus or minus lambda by 2 is equal to this is going to be equal to n into lambda plus or minus lambda by 2. So, immediately you can see that these two factors cancel up. And what you have is a neat looking expression, your 2 mu t is going to be equal to n lambda and therefore your t is going to be equal to n lambda divided by your 2 mu. So, this is now the condition for the minima. So, we have obtained the condition for the minima. Mind you, we have also obtained the expression for the maxima earlier. Let me write that down. So, this is the expression for the maxima which I have already obtained earlier. So, these are the two expressions we have obtained for the maxima and the minima that is for the constructive interference and destructive interference or for the condition for the minima and this is the condition let me just write it down over here that is minima or for the dark ring. This is the condition for the maxima or one can say that is for the bright ring. And what does this expression say? This gives you the thickness at which you are going to observe the minimas. This gives you the thickness at which you are going to observe the maximas. So, this is the condition for the minima or for getting the dark ring and this is the condition at which the thickness will give you the maxima or the bright ring. Sincere thanks students for watching this particular video. Stay tuned to Ekida and do subscribe to our channel Ekida. Thanks a lot.